So, good evening po sa inyong lahat. So, thank you for joining our Nikon School online session for this evening. Um, my name is Vince Tanching. I would be, uh, I'll be your uh, Nikon School instructor for tonight. And we all are going to talk about all, uh, everything about the introduction to photography. No? So, itong session natin, it's a quick and uh, quick and dirty, kumbaga na crash course all about uh, photography. Uh, basic siya kung paano natin uh, maha, paano tayo makakuha ng magandang litrato using our Nikon cameras as well as uh, we'll talk about gear a little bit we'll talk about composition a little bit so para rin ano lang siya uh, very uh, feature packed kumbaga yung ating usapan for tonight and I hope that you would be able to stay uh, until the end so yung session natin would be an hour and 30 minutes long so we'll be ending at around 7.30 Ah, uh, may questions kayo. Um, please feel free to interrupt me para rin maitanong niyo yung questions niyo as well as yun nga, ah, uh, ano tawag dito? Um, pwede tayong magkaroon ng learning, uh, ano tawag dito? Learning uh, avenue for all of us dito sa uh, session na to. Uh, si Miss Erica, I think she chatted. And sabi, uh, she's asking kung meron siyang marireceive na certificate. Actually, we can create a certificate naman po. We can send it to you through email na lang uh, using the email address that you used to sign up dito sa ating uh, Nikon School online session. So we can uh, do that na lang po. So yun. Uh, yun po. So yan. Uh, similar to that po. Kung meron kayong iba pang questions, please feel free to interrupt i-chat nyo lang po or kung gusto nyo po mag-raise kayo ng hand o mag-open kayo ng microphone. Uh, ano tayo dito? Nakukentuhan lang tayo dito. No? Pero yun nga. Um, I hope and I, I sincerely look forward na marami kayo matutunan sa session natin kahit na uh, very ano lang siya, very brief lang po siya. So yun. Uh, okay. So, uh, I think Meron na tayong quorum ngayon sa ating participants. So I think we can start. Doon sa iba nating participants, uh, I believe na pwede naman silang umabol. So we'll just take things uh, maayos lang yung pacing para rin uh, you can catch up din. So uh, paalala ko lang rin, kung gusto nyo mag-take ng notes, pwede, pwede kayo mag-take ng notes. Kung pwede kayo may mga questions kayo, itanong nyo lang para rin yung nga matututo tayo with each other's questions and feedbacks dito sa ating session for tonight. So, okay. Uh, let's get started na. No? Para, kasi mahaba-haba rin yung session natin. And, uh, tawag dito, makakapag-ano tayo, makakarami tayo, kumbaga. <laughs> okay? So, yun. Yan. Can you see my screen? Okay. Sige. Wag na tayo. Yan. So, introduction to photography. Yun ang ating session for tonight. So, ayan. Teka lang. Kapag hindi ko makita yung aking mouse pointer. Wait lang po. Yes. Okay. Dito natin. Okay. Introduction to photography. So, very, very, very uh, feature pack yung ating usapan tonight. Uh, before we go on, magpapakilala po muna ako. No? So, my name is Prince Tanching. I am a Nikon School instructor for the past three years or so. Actually, the Nikon School um, originally, uh, ano siya, face-to-face -face session siya. No? Pero dahil nga meron tayo pinigdaan ng pandemic, uh, we chose to uh, bring it online through our Zoom sessions na ganito. No? So, actually, blessing na rin siya kung isipin nyo kasi with our Nikon School, we are able to bring it to more people kahit na uh, wala sila sa Metro Manila or sa mga kalapit na mga locations. No? Kasi uh, yan ang pinaka nakukuha namin feedback before dyan sa Nikon School is that uh, primary audience namin are Metro Manila or nearby province base lang. No? So yung mga nasa Northern Luzon or Southern Luzon or Visayas and Mindanao, hindi sila nakaka experience ng Nikon School simply because yun nga, face-to-face uh, -face session siya so karamihan ng audiences namin sa mga malalapin na areas lang. Pero ngayon dahil nga online siya, anyone can sign up as long as syempre meron tayong available na registration slots lang and uh, yun nga, they can join us, they can ask their questions, they can um, ano tawag dito, they can be able to um, relate 
kahit na nasa malayong lugar sila. So, yun. So, I'm also a photographer. I do travel and uh, landscape photos. No? So, many of the photos that you'll be seeing here are photos that I took. No? So, uh, share ko lang rin sa, sa inyo for me to be able to sh- uh, to showcase kung ano yung point na dinidiscuss ko. No? So, uh, para mas meron ko yung visual representation of what is being uh, discussed. So, yun. Actually, uh, kung isipin nyo, ito yung pinakahuling session ng Introduction to Photography for 2021. No? So, abangan na lang natin what 2022 holds, pero kayo po yung uh, mga mapapalad, gumbaga, na participants for Nikon School 2021 na huling-huling Introduction to Photography session. So, yun. Okay. So, let's move forward. Uh, let's go back and discuss a little history with regards to photography. No? So, may nakakaintindi ba sa inyo ng Greek? I don't think so. No? So, ngayon nauuso yung Greek ulit kasi di ba yun yung mga pinapangalan nila sa mga uh, variants ng coronavirus. No? So, dyan si, ano ba, si Delta, si Beta, si Alpha, ngayon Omicron naman. So, di ba nagiging usap-usapan din yung mga Greek alphabet ngayon dahil nga dyan sa variants na yan. Pero, uh, let's take a deep dive into the history of photography. Uh, and that's with the Greek language. No? So, ang photography kasi, it gets its root word from the Greek language, basically. No? So, photography is, uh, or the, the Greek word for photography is called photographos. No? So, I don't think may nakakabasa sa inyo yan ng, ng mabilis. Ano? Pero that's the, the Greek word for it, photographos. No? So, ang photographos, it's a compound word. So, compound word siya. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng compound word? A compound word is a word that is made up of two or more words joined together to form a single word. Basically, ang photographos, compound word siya, made up of two words. No? So, the first word is photos. No? So, photos, um, that's where we get or that's roughly translated to the English word light. No, so diyan natin nakukuha yung words natin na photosynthesis, telephoto, photojournalism, photocopy. So ano ba yung photosynthesis? That's the way plants make uh, food through sunlight. Telephoto, that's basically uh, instruments that we use to view very, very distant objects. Photojournalism is basically uh, the storytelling of news using uh, images and text and photocopy to create a, a concrete copy of something using light. So, yun, dyan po pasok yung mga photocopy machines natin or tinatawag natin Xerox machines. No? So, the second word for photography is graphos. No? So, it's roughly translated to the English word meaning to write down. So, to write down, uh, dyan natin nakuha yung English words natin na biography, uh, cartography, graph and calligraphy, no? Uh, papatay ko nga muna yung camera ko para na ano ko, nakikita ko yung sarili ko lang sa salita. <laughs> Ayan. Tsaka para makafocus din kayo sa ano natin, sa slides natin. Ayan. Ayan. Okay. <laughs> okay, sige. So, uh, in terms of biography naman, biography is the uh, writing of one's own life story. Cartography is the way we make maps. Graph is the visual representation of a uh, certain data range. And calligraphy is the art of writing. So when we combine the two words, photos and graphos, we get the English word. Oops. Why is it not moving? Uy, what happened? Hindi lang po ah. Nawala, nawala. Ulit, ulit. <laughs> Meron tayong technical, technical. Aha. Share screen. Yeah. 
Yan. So, balikan natin si photographos. Ha? Photos and graphos. Na bilaukan si Kino. <laughs> okay. So, that's where we get the word photography or photographos. Which, when we translate it, it basically, basically translates to photography or to paint or to record with light. So, importante talaga ang ilaw when we do photography. No? So, subukan yung pumikit. Most likely, wala kayong nakikita kasi walang ilaw na pumapasok sa mata nyo. No? So, light is a very essential um, element when we do photography. No? So, ngayon, tatanungin natin, ano ba kailangan natin when we do photography? No? So, uh, there are a lot of uh, tools and a lot of factors that we need to consider for us to be able to uh, do photography. No? Unang-una, syempre, kailangan natin ng camera. No? So, uh, mahirap mag-shoot ng photography pag wala kang camera. So, nandyan, syempre, yung mga cameras na, yung mga entry level ng DSLR, yung mga prof professional na DSLR bodies, meron din tayong mga tinatawag na mirrorless. No? So, meron din tayong mga tinatawag na upper end or prosumer or professional consumer na DSLRs, na full frame, na crop sensor. And meron din tayong mga tinatawag na mga bridge cameras. So, mga bridge cameras, so, these are cameras na non-removable yung lens and you're able to uh, zoom in and out by flicking a button. No? So, hindi, mo kailangan mag hindi ka na kailangan magpalit ng lens for you to be able to uh, shoot distant objects. No? So, actually, kahit anong camera pa yan, okay na okay yan as long as um, Nikon camera yung gamit nyo. No? So, pero, syempre, kidding aside, you're able to do photography as long as meron kang daladalang camera so kahit smartphone na yan or film camera man yan. As long as meron kang tool to record your images, you're able to do photography. No? Second one, Siyempre, kailangan mo ng lens. No? So, lenses. Lenses are what we use basically to focus on our subject. No? So, kung wala kang lens, meron kang ilaw, you're still able to view an image, pero that image is not in focus simply because wala kang mechanism to focus your subject. So, dyan pumapasok ang lente. No? So, nakikita niyo itong image na yan. Napakadami, di ba? Ang dami-daming lente. Bakit ganun? Kailangan ko ba yung lahat? The simple answer is no. Simply because, uh, kaya ka nakakakita ng ganyang karaming lenses is that Nikon and other camera manufacturers uh, make these kinds of lenses for very specific uh, shooting situations. So very specific needs of a photographer. No? So kunyari, nagsushoot ka ng uh, ano bang maganda? Portraits. So kailangan mo ng 50mm na lens or 85mm na lens. Pag nagsushoot ka ng mga wildlife o yung mga wild animals, kailangan mo ng lenses na mahahaba for you to be able to shoot at a distance. Siyempre, isipin mo, magsushoot ka ng leon, naka 50mm ka na lens. Eh di, bago mo pa siya mapicture, nilapa ka na niya kasi ganun ka kalapit. So hindi po pwede yun. Meron talagang special purpose na lente ang ginagawa ng bawat camera manufacturer for certain application. No? So, what do you need? You simply need a lens that is able to capture or that is able to address kung ano yung specific needs mo sa photographer. So, dyan, dyan papasok yung, yung genre uh, as a photographer. So, so, yun yun. So, kung mahili ka mag-shoot ng events, dyan papasok yung mga lenses na wide angle or landscape, ganyan, wide angle lenses din yan. Uh, fish eye, so kung mahili ka mag-shoot ng mga creative photos, pwede rin yun. So, na, depending nga siya sa gamit mo. So, how do you know what you need? it would depend on the genre that you are going into. So, malalaman mo rin yung genre, yan, genre na yan after, you know, uh, a few years of really uh, experimenting or trying out different photography genres para rin makita mo kung hihilig mo and mai, uh, bago ka mag-invest sa multiple equipment. So, yun. Any questions so far po? Kung may questions kayo, just let me know. Ah. I-chat nyo lang doon sa ating chat box and I'll address them. So, I'll answer your questions. Okay, next one. Siyempre, kailangan mo rin ng subject. No? Subjects are very important in terms of doing photography kasi kung lang subject, medyo mahirap mag-shoot or medyo mahirap ma-identify kung ano talagang genre or anong 
uh, types of photography that you are doing. So, dyan sa subject niya, dyan papasok yung genre kung mahilig ka ba sa sports, mahilig ka ba sa portraiture, mahilig kang kumuha ng uh, pet photos, ng babies, ng fruits, and everything in between. So, ano ano ba yung mga genre? So, proceeding, pwede pumasok dyan yung uh, landscape photography or architectural photography. Pwede pumasok dyan yung portraiture. No? So, pwede din dyan yung product photography. No? So, yung mga baso, mga wine bottles, mga yun nga, mga food, mga bote ng soft drinks. No? So, uh, napakaraming genre. O pwede rin automotive photography or travel. So, uh, it would really depend on what uh, piques your interest. Kung saan ka interesado, basically. And with that, yun yung genre na pagbubutihin mo or that's the genre that you would really go into. Actually, ako, for the longest time, uh, hindi ko rin alam ko ano yung genre na gusto ko. So I tried out doing portraiture. I tried out doing landscape photography. I mean, events photography. Nag-macro din ako. So, uh, with that, oh maganda. Susubukan ko siya. Pero, what really uh, piqued my interest, basically, is doing landscape and travel photography. No? So, uh, I'll be showing some of my photos then later for you to be able to really appreciate what I'm talking about. Okay? So, creativity. No? So, bukod sa pagkakaroon ng subject, syempre, you should put in your own uh, kumbaga, identity, your own uh, stamp of who took that photo. By how, how do you do it? By being creative. No? So, basically, when you do your creative, uh, when you, well, when you inject creativity your, to your photos, pinibigyan mo ng identity yung mga litrato. Na parang kunyari, ah, si ganyan na nagkumuha niyan simply because ito kasi yung ginukuha na niya talaga. So, na-identify yung mga litrato dahil binibigyan mo ng buhay yung litrato mo through your creativity. So, how do you do that? So, you can use techniques such as uh, shooting uh, backlit or tinatawag yung silhouette. Uh, you can shoot uh, ito, this was one of my photos uh, back in 2019 in Hong Kong. So, uh, you can shoot travel photos or landscape photos. So, ayan, nilagyan ko rin siya ng konting uh, editing na diskarte para rin mas mukhang dynamic yung litrato. No? Uh, macro photo, photography. So, mukha siyang uh, yung petals nagbumukhang parang frame dun sa gitna nung Nung, nung flower, yung pistil, yan. Pwede rin astrophotography. No? So this was also one of my photos I took uh, back in 2015. This is this was in Zambales. No? So uh, Milky Way, no? astrophotography. No? So yun nga, it's, it's a matter of putting in your own identity, putting in your own stamp of who took that photo because uh, binigyan mo ng buhay, kumbaga, yung mga litrato mo. So ngayon, we asked the question, no? how do we take a proper photo? No? So uh, dito pumapasok yung mga terminologies uh, that we usually encounter when we study all about the, the introduction or the basics of photography. Dito pumapasok yung terms na exposure. So ano ba ang exposure? Basically, ang, ang exposure, it's a basic element of photography. So it determines kung gano'ng kaliwanag o gano'ng kadilim ang litrato mo pag na-litratuhan siya o pag nakuhanan siya. Meron tayong tatlong settings na pinapalitan dyan or tatlong factors na ginagalaw dyan which are yung aperture, si ISO, tsaka si shutter speed. No? So pag na-master mo itong tatlong settings na to, meron ka ng kumbaga intuition for photography. Basically, ano ibig sabihin, no? pag kunyari pumunta ka sa isang eksena, tinignan mo yung, yung uh, isang particular scene masasabi mo na kagad, ah, ito yung gagamitin kong ISO, ito yung shutter speed, ito yung aperture for this particular scene. O, paano mo siya nalaman? Kasi, meron ka ng intuition kasi marunong ka magbasa ng ilaw. Mabaga. So, you know how to be able to uh, gauge yung proper exposure. Yan. So, yun. So, how do you capture the perfect photo? Meron tayong tinatawag na exposure triangle. Ano ba exposure triangle na yan? These are the elements or the factors 
na si ISO, si aperture at si shutter speed, pag kinumbine mo siya, dahil nga tatlong elements siya, plinat lang nila sa isang diagram na three-sided, kaya siya nagiging exposure triangle. At when you ba- when you're able to balance these three exposure or these three factors, you get a perfect exposure. So yon. Any questions po? May questions ba tayo? Chat lang natin sa ating uh, chat ha, para mabasa po natin at masagot natin. Okay? Sige, let's move forward po. So let's talk about aperture unang-una. Ano po yung aperture? No? Basically, aperture is how open or how close the lenses iris is. Ano ba ibig nun? Ang lenses kasi natin, meron siyang uh, aperture blades na tinatawag. Itong aperture blades na to, these blades control how much light is able to be absorbed by the lens going to the sensor. So gano'ng karaming ilaw ang pwedeng pumasok sa lente natin papasok sa sensor. No? So ang aperture kasi it's measured in tinatawag nating F number. So ang F number, isa siyang mathematical, uh, ang tawag dito? mathematical unit of measurement which measures the size of an opening of the iris of a lens. So ano siya? Uh, unit of measurement siya basically. So ang tatandaan natin, ang F number kasi inverse po yan. Ang ano ba ibig sabihin ng inverse? Ang ibig sabihin ng inverse baliktad. No, inverse number siya. So, ang wide aperture or lower F number, ibig sabihin nun, mas maraming ilaw yung papasok sa lens, papasok sa sensor, kasi mas malaki yung opening. And a narrower aperture or mas mataas yung F number, it allows less light to enter the lens going to the sensor. So, bigyan natin ng konting visual representation yan. Yan, okay. So, Aperture, sabi ko kanina, mas maliit yung number, mas malaki yung opening. So, tingnan natin yung 1.4. Dahil 1.4 siya, 1.4 is a very, very small number. Pero yung tingnan yung opening niya, sobrang laki. No? As you compare it to 2, 2 is a bigger number than 1.4. Pero dahil na F number to, inverse siya, mas maliit yung value ng 2 kesa sa 1.4. And as you go down, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, and 16. Palaki ng palaki yung F number, paliit ng paliit yung opening, paliit ng paliit yung value niya. No? So, actually, F numbers or yung aperture uh, values are not limited dito sa walo na to. No? So, there are some lenses that can go as small as F95. So, isipin mo kung gano'ng kalay yung number, di ba? 95 yung number, pero dahil nga inverse number siya, isipin mo kung gano'ng kaliit yung aperture. No? Sobra, so, so, baka galing git na lang yung number or yung yung amount of light na pwedeng pumasok doon. Also, in retrospect, uh, ang largest F uh, number is hindi 1.4. No? So there are lenses that can go up to 1.2. F1, meron pa nga isang lens si Nikon na minamanufacture. The aperture is F0.95. So isipin mo kung gano'ng kaliit yung, yung F. Kung gano'ng kalaki yung F value nun, F number, dahil nga 0.95 na lang siya, decimal na lang. So, gano'ng kalaki yung opening nun? So, yun yung pinaka kailangan mong uh, isipin or malaman tungkol sa aperture. No? So, yun. So, ano yung tsura niya? Pag sa actual ng mga litrato. No? Ito, papakita, magpapakita po ako ng mga photos. Two, uh, Give examples. No? So, so uh, tandaan din natin ang depth of field is a product of aperture. Ano ba depth of field? It's basically kung gaano kara, kung gaano kadaming part ng litrato mo is in focus. No? So, meron tayong dalawang klaseng depth of field, yung deep focus tsaka yung shallow focus. Deep focus basically everything from the foreground or do sa harap ng lente mo hanggang doon sa pinaka background. Everything is sharp. Deep focus siya. Shallow focus naman is basically everything that is from the front of the lens to your subject, yun yung sharp, and from your subject to the background, blurred out na siya. So yun ang shallow focus. Yun yung tinatawag nilang bokeh. Nakabokeh yung background. Yan, yan po yun. Okay. Narrow our aperture or higher F numbers, more depth of field siya and more of the scene in focus. And wider aperture naman or mas maliit yung F number, 
less depth of field or less part of the scene in focus. Ito ngayon tinan tawag natin nakaboke. No? So, paano ba sinushoot yung mga portrait? Kunyari, yung subject ng babae, sharp siya. Tapos yung background blurred out na. You use a very, very wide aperture. 1.8, 1.4, f2, ganyan. Okay? So, how does it look? Sabi ko kanina, a larger aperture. Ibig sabihin na maliit yung f number kasi nga, inverse number siya. Shallow po yung depth of field. Meaning, konti lang yung parts ng eksena mo that is in focus. So, yeah. So, 1.2 po ang gamit ng lens yan. F1.2. So, titignan nyo po yung picture ng girl. Sharp yung face niya, pati yung fingers niya. Pero everything in the background is blurred out simply because nakafocus ako sa kanya at yung background niya. Dahil nga 1.2 yung aperture po, it's completely blurred out. No? Yeah. Okay. So let's give another example. So yeah, landscape. Wow. Yeah, this photo was taken in Sisiman Bay in Zambales. No, so one of the best photography spots here. Lalo na pag sunrise. Yeah. Okay. Kasi meron yung rocky beach, tapos meron bang lighthouse. And so, ang ginamit ko naman dito for me to be able to capture this scene was a very small aperture f sixteen. No, so. Dahil nga maliit yung aperture ko, everything from the foreground to the background, mula doon sa bato-bato sa unahan, hanggang doon sa sunrise, doon sa pinaka-pinaka dulo, it's sharp because I use a small aperture and it gave me a very, very large or deep depth of field. So everything is in focus. Bakit ko gusto nyo? Siyempre, gusto ko na sharp si background, sharp yung sunset, ay yung sunrise, sharp yung Uh, lighthouse, sharp din yung mga bato sa harap ko. Magaganda siya for you to be able to really uh, showcase the entire scene. So you, you usually use a small aperture when you when you shoot landscapes. Yan. Okay? Questions po? Meron po ba? Questions? Yan. Okay. Sige. Wala pa po. May questions kayo? Type nyo lang ha, para sasagutin natin yung agad-agad. Okay? Okay? So ngayon, how do you control your aperture? No? So, pag naka-entry level ka ng mga body, yan, parang yung example natin si D5600. So entry level body is basically si D3000 series tsaka si D5000 series. No? So, um, yan basically yung mga camera na walang LCD yung ibabaw. Okay? So, how do you control your aperture? Pre first, you press your Exposure Compensation Button. So, makikita mo yan yung may plus minus. Tapos, meron siyang maliit na icon ng parang lens no, sa gilid, yung aperture ng lens. no. You hold that down. Tapos, you rotate yung command dial mo. So, makikita mo magpapalit yung iyong aperture. Okay? Ayan. Okay. So, paano naman kung naka high-end naman ako na camera? No? So, paano ko siya i-control? High-end cameras, basically, ito yung mga D7000 series pa akyat. So, yung mga, pati yung mga full frame, ayan na po siya. No? So, basta yung signifying, ano natin dyan, yung may LCD sa ibabaw. So, itong mga cameras na ito, meron siyang tinatawag na sub-command dial. So, what you do is you twist your sub-command dial using your index finger at makikita mo magpapalit na yung iyong aperture. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Next one. Shutter speed naman. Okay, so ito yung second na factor that you control when you want to achieve a good or a perfect exposure. Okay? Shutter speed. Shutter speed basically is kung gano'ng katagal naka-open yung shutter mo, ng camera mo, to allow light to pass through it and go to the sensor. No? Kung gano'ng katagal din naka-expose yung sensor mo sa ilaw. No? Mas mabilis yung shutter speed mo, mas maikli yung panahon na makakapag-gather siya ng ilaw kasi ang bilis lang niya naka-open. Eh, no? And with that, it results in a lower exposure. Lower exposure, ibig sabihin, mas madilim. Okay? Okay. Yan. Slower shutter speeds naman, it allows the, the sensor to gather more light. So, it results in a brighter or higher exposure. Mas maliwanag yung iyong Uh, output image. No? Actually, itong shutter speed na to, it 
really opens up numerous possibilities and creative input. Personally, ito yung isa sa mga paborito kong paglaruan when I do my photography because it allows me to really experiment on various settings, various combinations of uh, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. And with that, I'm able to really churn out very, very interesting images kasi uh, dynamic yung kinalalabas ng mga litrato. Hindi siya very, very static lang or steady lang. No? Okay. Next one. So shutter speed by the numbers. Basically, ito, this is simply a, a diagram that showcases kung ano yung mga common shutter speeds. Pero hindi ito yung hard and fast na kailangan susundin ko. Kasi sabi ni Sir Vince na ito yung shutter speed range na gamitin ko. So basically, ang, ito lang yung mga ranges niya. So kung kunyari mag-shoot ka ng mabilis na movement, kagamit ka ng mga shutter speed na between 1 over 1,000 and 1 over 4,000. And as you go down and slower and slower, ayan, so up to the 1 over 50 and 1 over 100, typical handheld photos yan in good light. No? 1 half second to 1 thirtieth of a second, uh, dyan mo ma-achieve yung mga tinatawag nilang uh, silky smooth, kumbaga na water and waves and uh, movement of water in a photo, no? And as you go slower and slower, dyan na yung gagamit ka na ng tripod for you to be able to stabilize your photos kasi very, very long exposure siya. Kung mapapansin nyo po, towards the bottom of the table, ang unit of measurement natin may 1 over kung ano yung shutter speed, no? But as you go higher and higher, nagiging full second siya. So, yun sa baba, yung may 1 over we can basically signify it as a fraction of a second. So, mas, matal, mas mabilis pa siya kaysa sa isang segundo. No? So, um, the human eye basically cannot see that kasi sobrang bilis na niya. Pero the camera can. So, kaya natin makapag-freeze ng motion. Uh, kaya natin makapag- uh, capture ng mga very, very fast subjects dahil nga meron tayong cameras. And uh, with the top part of the table naman. Na, nakikita nyo, bu, ano na siya, one entire second na siya. So, two seconds, one second, hanggang all the way to 30 seconds, may mga shutter speeds pa nga na mas matagal pa dyan. No? So, um, these are full seconds. So, kunyari, titingin ka sa relo, isang titik nung second hand, yun ang one second. No? So, basically, alam, alam naman natin yan. So, these are simply, sabi ko nga, guide lang when it comes to the shutter speed that you would be using. No? So, uh, depende pa rin yan sa shooting conditions mo, depende pa rin yan sa ISO na gamit mo, depende pa rin yan sa aperture na gamit mo. So, paglalaroan mo yung tatlong settings talaga niya for you to be able to achieve a proper exposure. Okay? <clears throat> Questions po? Meron po ba? Wala pa. Okay, sige po. Let's go forward. So, how does it look? Papakita po ako ng mga litrato. So, sabi ko kanina na very, very... Very, very silky smooth na tubig. Ayan, so may waterfall. Ayan. So this was captured, but uh, I used a, very, a slow shutter speed of one half second. So kalahating segundo lang yan para magmukhang super, super smooth at super, super flowy ng tubig do sa background. Okay. Uh, fireworks. Ayan. So I'm also a photographer for UST. So ito yung mga annual nila na fireworks display ng baccalaureate mass tsaka ng paskuhan. Yun yung parang annual Christmas celebrations ng USD. Actually, dalawang taon, magdadalawang taon na nang wala kasi syempre, yun nga, pandemic tayo, hindi tayo po pwede yung mga ganitong crowds. Nakakamiss lang din, no? So, this was captured using uh, slow shutter speed ng fireworks. Five seconds po ang gamit natin dyan. Yung pag gumagamit na tayo ng mga shutter speeds na mas mahaba sa one second, it's highly encouraged that we use or we put our camera on a tripod para stable yung shot na hindi siya mag-blur. Kasi lahat ng movement na nakikita ng camera natin habang nag expose yung image natin or nakataas yung shutter natin, lahat yung nakukuha nun ng camera. So, kung meron ka ng konting image, no? so, Kung gusto natin na very, very stable image natin, uh, 
wheels sa tripod. So magtataka kayo. Actually, yung tata, may mga nagtatanong rin sa akin ito dati. Pero bakit ganun? Fireworks po siya, pero yung foreground po, yung mga tao, sobrang steady po nila. So actually, very, very... Uh, napakaswerte lang talaga niyang litrato na yun. Simply because, dahil nga lahat sila nakatutok at nanonood sa fireworks display sa ibabaw, steady sila. Tapos kumukuha rin sila ng litrato. So, gusto rin nila steady sila. So, kung mapapansin nyo yung lalaki na nasa lower right ng frame, yung kulay dilaw yung damit, medyo nag-blur out siya kasi gumalaw siya. So, yun. Very, yan po ang ano natin, yan ang sekreto natin. So, mag- kung makukuha kayo ng fireworks, use a tripod, Uh, five seconds na ginamit ko ng service speed for me to be able to capture yung mula sa pagputok niya sa baba, paakit ko lang sa sky, hanggang sa pagputok na niya sa sky, capture siya in the exposure. Yan. Okay? Next. Yan. So, isa rin sa mga nakuha lang ko last year, uh, ito yung time na nagluwag ng kahit pa paano during the pandemic sa so mga October last year to, 2020. Uh, kating-kating na ako mag-shoot niya pagdako BGC. So, I set up my tripod sa may sidewalk. I waited for vehicles to pass by. I used a shutter speed, a very long shutter speed, 20 seconds or a slow shutter speed. So, yan ang isa sa mga favorite ko rin na gamiting effects or techniques. No? So, para maging dynamic yung litrato mo, gumamit ka ng light trails. And for you to be able to capture the light trails, gumamit ka ng slow shutter speed. 15, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds. Depende sa shooting situation na inukuhanan mo. Pero siyempre, kailangan mo rin ng tripod for that. So, yun. Next one. So, sa kabilang banda naman, eto mga batang tumatakbo papunta sa akin. Gusto ko sharp sila. Hindi sila burnt out. So, what do I do? I use a fast shutter speed of 1 over 100 of a second to be able to freeze their motion. Yan. Ano yan? Cuts. Okay. Uh, another example is, ito, naglalakad sila towards the end of the tunnel. I use a fast shutter speed of 1 over 250th of a second para mag-freeze yung motion nila. And also, dahil nga maliwanag yung background nila, nag-silhouette sila. So that's also a technique that you can use. No? So pwede kang gumamit na mabilis sa shutter speed tapos yung subject mo, it's lighted or lit, backlit, nasa likod yung light source, magsisilhouette siya. Yan. Okay? So may questions po ba tayo? Wala pa rin. Okay, sige po. Let's move forward. So ngayon, how do you control it? Shutter speed. So both yung mga entry-level cameras tsaka yung mga uh, high-end cameras, yung tinatawag natin command dial, ikutin lang po natin yan, makikita po natin na nagpapalit yung ating shutter speed. So, yun lang po. Ganun lang po siya kadaling palitan. So, shutter speed, ayan. So, tatandaan natin, pag gumamit tayo na mabilis na shutter speed, 1 over 1,000 of a second. If you look to the top right of our diagram, nakikita natin sharp and well-detailed yung ating litrato kasi mabilis yung shutter speed natin. But as we go slower and slower and slower and slower, all the way to one second and even slower, nakikita natin na bird out na yung litrato natin kasi in motion siya. No? And in terms of light naman, when we use a fast shutter speed, it's darker kasi nga less time exposed yung sensor natin sa ilaw. And when we use a slower shutter speed, it allows our sensor to gather more light. Pero yun nga, it's prone to blur. Okay? So ISO naman. So this is the last uh, factor that we consider when we do uh, want to get a good or perfect exposure. So ang ISO, ISO, kung nakikita niyo itong screen na ito sa mga cameras nyo, ito yung tinatawag natin ISO sensitivity settings. Basically, ang ISO is a unit of measurement kung gano'ng ka-sensitive yung ilaw o yung camera natin sa ilaw. Yan. Ang ISO kasi, it's a French term. No? So, medyo magbabalubalok to tayo ng dila niya kung babasahin natin ang French. Pero, it's roughly translated to the International Organization for Standardization. No? So, sila yung nagsiset ng standard ng lahat ng bagay sa ating mundo. So, kaya tayo merong order, meron tayong uh, set rules, set 
uh, measurement of every single thing in the world kasi uh, etong international organization for standardization sila ang magbigay ng standard for that so ah uh, ko napaka creative na ng ano pinangalan yung ISO as ISO <laughs> pero basically it's how sensitive your sensor is to light no so tatandaan natin na mas mababa yung ISO mas gusto natin yan pero mas mataas yung ISO, uh, it dramatically increases our image noise. No? So, yun lang yung magiging trade-off niya. Actually, swerte nga tayo dahil ngayon, ano na tayo, digital age na tayo eh. So, we, we can, we're, we're able to replace or change yung sensitivity ng sensor natin to light. Dati kasi, pag nagsushoot tayo ng film, kung anong film yung piliin natin, kunyari, ISO 100 yung film, pag sinalpakan natin sa, sen- sa camera natin yan, yun na yung magiging ISO sensitivity natin all throughout the role. So, kailangan ubusin natin yung role bago tayo makapagpalit ng ISO. Kasi, pag pinilit mo, buksan mo yung camera mo, may expose yung film, masisira. So, ayaw natin yun. So, let's move forward. Yan. By the numbers, ito ulit, papaalala ko lang, these are simply a guide or a diagram para kung ano yung gagamitin natin ISO value when we're shooting. So, ideally, when we shoot outdoors, mataas ang sikat ng araw, we use a, slow, a low ISO. Kasi hindi natin kailangan na ganun sensitive yung sensor natin na humigop ng ilaw. Pero as we go indoors or as the light fades or mas dumidilim, we select a brighter or a higher ISO for uh, for the sensor to be more sensitive to light. No? So, kailangan magamit tayo ng mas, ta- mas mataas na ISO. So, actually, isipin nyo, teka lang, sir, kala ko ba kailangan mas mababang ISO, mas maganda? Oo, tama yun. Pero, dahil nga magaganda na ang sensors ng mga cameras natin ngayon, very advanced na ang technology, kahit yung mga entry-level cameras, you can use a very or a higher ISO and yung image mo yung image quality mo, hindi gaano man sa software. So, very, very good siya. So, yun. Okay. Yan. So, ito, ano lang siya, uh, simulation lang po ito. So, when you look at the left square, makikita mo, gumamit ako ng mababang ISO dito, makikita mo yung image niya, fairly clean. No? So, mababa yung image noise. And when we look at the right square, mataas yung ginamit ko ng ISO dito. Kaya nakikita mo yung details ng litrato or yung square, hindi na siya ganun ka-apparent. Medyo madumi siya. Yung tinatawag natin image noise. Okay? So ngayon, we ask the question, how does it look? No, so ang sabi ko kanina, mas mataas yung ISO, mas maliwanag pero mas, mata- mas madaming noise or mas prone siya sa noise. So ngayon, uh, itong litrato na ito. No? So yan, uh, Makati Skyline. This photo was shot at 6,400 ISO. Makikita mo, maliwanag ba ayos, di ba? But when we put a red square in the middle and zoom in, ito yung makikita natin. Yan. So, makikita natin, maliwanag ang image, pero yung detalye niya, lusaw-lusaw na, di ba? Wala na yung pagkita ng mga building, kung saan nagsisimula yung isang building at saan nagtatapos yung isa. Hindi na siya ganun ka-sharp. Basag-basag na yung pixels kasi pinush na natin yung sensor to its limit. No? Actually, itong 6400 ISO na shot na to, this was shot with a 13-year-old DSLR. So, syempre, ang dami ng innovations in terms of technology, technological advancements na naganap in those 13 years. No? So, makikita lang natin, this was just used as a demonstration. Okay? Now, another example. No? So, ito, This, as, as sabi ko kanina, ang mababang ISO, it gathers less light, pero less nga yung noise mo. No? So, this is a photo of our cat. No? So, si Bucci. No? So, si Bucci, uh, nung baby siya photogenic siya, ngayon kasi tamad eh. <laughs> tamad na siya, ayaw na magpa-picture, tulog na lang ng tulog. No? So, during this time, ano pa siya niya eh, uh, makulit pa, Mahilig-hilig pong mag, ano, mag-explore, explore. So, uh, eto, sumisilip-silip siya sa gitna ng kurtina at saka ng bintana. No? 
So this shot was taken, yan, ano yan, uh, window lighting yan. So ang ganda. This shot was taken using ISO 200. So uh, a very, very low ISO. So when we put in the magical red square and zoom in to her face, so makikita natin, very, very sharp ang kanyang uh, details sa mukha, yung mata niya, yung mga fur niya sa mukha, yung whiskers niya. So parang sarap i-kiss. No? Sobrang cute. <laughs> siya si Bucci. So yun. So ngayon, tatanong niya sa akin, Sir, paano po yun? O paano kung max out na yung aperture ko? Max out na yung shutter speed ko? Hindi ako pwedeng gumamit ng masyadong mabagal kasi magbablur na yung image ko. Wala na akong choice na itaas yung ISO ko. Paano po yun? Uh, my advice is, is that sige, walang problema. Itaas mo yung ISO mo for you just to be able to capture a good photo. Simply because mas pipiliin ko na yung image ko noisy siya pero detalyado tsaka uh, sharp siya, hindi siya blurred as compared sa isang litrato naman na walang noise pero blurred siya kasi napakababa ng nga iso na ginagawa. So yun. Okay? So just, just keep that in mind. Okay? So may questions po ba tayo? Wala pa. Okay, sige. Let's move forward. So ngayon, how do you control yung ISO? So when you have a an entry-level DSLR, meron tayong I button sa likod. You press that, lalabas yung LCT. Tapos gamitin mo yung directional pad, yung may up, down, left, and right. Go to ISO, press OK. Tapos select your ISO. Okay? Okay. So next one. Uh, papano naman kung uh, medyo higher end mo yung camera ko? Yung mga higher end cameras kasi meron siyang dedicated na ISO button. So yan, pindutin mo lang yan, tapos ikutin mo yung command dial mo. And you're able to change your ISO. Okay, so ngayon, let's talk about uh, yung run-through ng ating exposure. So pag gumamit tayo ng aperture, in terms of aperture, unang-una, uh, dahil inverse number siya, you get more light into your sensor pero ang trade-off nun is shallow depth of field, parang si 1.4 as compared sa 22 sa 32. In shutter speed naman, a slower shutter speed gets more light pero it's more prone to blur. A uh, faster shutter speed uh, takes in less light pero sharp yung images mo. In terms of ISO naman, a, slow, a low ISO is more desirable, pero don't be afraid to raise it pag kailangan na ng shooting conditions mo. So, mas pataas lang na ISO, mas prone ka lang sa image noise na tinatawag nila. Yan. Mas nag-degrade lang yung quality ng retrato natin, pero mas maliwanag siya. Okay? Yun. So now, we go on to how do you capture the perfect photo? No, so, you combine these three elements, yung ating element of exposures na shutter speed, ISO, at aperture. And with that, may makikita kasi kayong exposure meter sa loob ng camera nyo. So, yung parang ganyan. May negative 2, black, dot, dot, negative 1, dot, 0, dot, dot, 1, dot, dot, 2. So, nasa top LCD nyo yan or nandun siya sa screen nyo, or nandun siya sa loob ng viewfinder nyo, masisilip nyo siya. No? So, tandaan nyo na ilagay nyo usually yung, or typically ilagay nyo yung, yung exposure meter sa gitna. Kasi, it would signify a correctly exposed meter. No? Pag nilagay mo siya sa negative side, underexposed siya. At pag nilagay mo siya sa positive side, doon naman papasok yung overexposed siya or sobrang liwanag nung nitrato mo. Yan. Okay? So ngayon, alam na natin yung rules. No? So now we break the rules. Kasi photography is not always about the rules and creativity is never bound by rules. So importante na alam natin yung basics, alam natin yung exposure triangle, pero with that, pag sunod lang tayo na sunod sa kung ano yung sinasabi ng exposure triangle natin, ang nangyayari, nagiging boring yung nitrato natin. So ayaw natin ng ganun. Gusto natin dynamic yung nitrato natin. And how do we do that? We break the rules. No? So ginagawa lang natin siyang benchmark, pero we change our settings accordingly 
based on what we want to inject in the photo. So kung gaano natin kung gaano natin ipo-push yung creativity natin sa litrato. So so you break the rules, you take the extra mile and take risks because it's part of the creative process. <clears throat> so yan, uh, dyan mo, you combine the the elements of uh, shooting a fast shutter speed na back rate yung subject mo. Tapos paano nyo sir nagawa yung parang may light race to sa gitna? So sabi ko nga kanina, di ba? Pag gumagamit ka ng maliit na aperture, less yung light na mong pasok sa sensor mo. And with that, uh, the smaller the aperture that you use, meron siyang tinatawag na sun star effect. So yan ang effect pag bright lit yung subject mo tapos gumamit ka ng F22 na aperture. So, nagbaburst or nagsa-sun star yung bright point of light. So, that's one creative aspect that you can try out. So, yan then long exposures. No? So, uh, ito, I think this was 6 seconds. And then, 30, 36 seconds para lang makuha ko itong trails ng light na ito na sobrang tagal as well as maging well-lit yung Ortigas skyline. Yan. Actually, hindi na ganito yung itsura nitong location na ito simply because this is yung Capital Commons. No? So, nandiyan na yung mall ngayon. Tapos, meron ng intersection sa gitna. So, ibang-iba na siya talaga. Okay? Uh, yan. This is also a long exposure photo in Araneta Avenue. I think, hindi mo na rin pwedeng kuha ng itong litrato na ito kasi meron ng Skyway Stage 3 sa ibabaw. So, medyo, ano siya, obscured na yung perspective na yan. Yun. Okay? Yan. So, yun nga, uh, as you can see, napaka-importante na maging dynamic yung litrato mo. And how do you do that? You put, or you you put a sense of speed or sense of movement in your photos. No? So, maganda dyan, lalagyan mo nga yan, light trails, uh, light streaks, para din mas mukhang buhay yung litrato mo, hindi lang siya static. Okay. Ayan, so medyo ano rin siya, scary din yan kasi that was captured uh, atop one of the skyscrapers in BGC. So nakadumaw yung camera ko sa ledge o doon sa edge ng building for me to be able to capture that shot. So medyo scary lang. Siyempre, eh, doble, triple ingat tayo ng mga time na yan kasi ayaw natin una malaglaga ng camera. Pangalawa, ayaw din natin makasakit ng ibang tao kasi meron tayo na laglaga ng camera. So iwas-iwas natin yung mga ganun pangyayari. Okay. Questions ko ah. Please feel free to ask kung meron kayong tanong. Okay. So yan din. Uh, Rockwell na uh, image. Actually, medyo matagal na rin itong image ito eh. Hindi na ganyan ang Rockwell skyline ngayon. Nag-iiba sila every single year. So I think this was 2016 if I'm not mistaken. No exposure ulit syempre. Ayan. So fireworks ulit. <laughs> uh, this photo has a very cool story behind it. Kung mapapansin mo bakit parang medyo may mga petals-petals sa mismong litrato, paano na-achieve yun? So actually, this photo was taken ng Paskuhan sa USD, December yung, I think, 2014. At that time, umuulan. So sabi ko, kung di ako mag-shoot, wala akong makukuha ang litrato. So kahit na umuulan, sinaba ko na lang yung camera ko. So that's one thing na kailangan nyo pag-ingatan, huwag nyo masyadong gagawin nyo, huwag nyo kong gagayahin kasi baka masira yung camera nyo mabasa. Pero, yun nga, I think that was one sacrifice worth doing kasi ang ganda ng output photo na nakuha lang ko. Yeah. So, nabasa yung lens, nag-fireworks, nag-glare siya, nag-reflect yung water droplets sa aking image. Yeah. So ngayon, we utilize... We learn how we utilize our cameras, P, A, S, and M modes. So ito yung mga camera modes natin. So iisa-isahin po natin yung let's run through it for us to know uh, which modes are most appropriate for us. Okay? So una-una, uh, these modes are what helps me personally capture all the images that I take. So uh, especially si manual mode, so, si M mode. So iisa-isahin natin yan. So si P mode or si program auto mode, uh, this mode is a mode that the, pri the camera primarily controls all your settings. No? Pero pinapayagan lang yung i-override yun. So it's perfect for shooting situations na wala kang oras na ikaw mismo yung mag-manipulate ng camera settings mo. 
So, kailan ba to? Usually, kunyari, concerts. No? So, pag, kunyari, pwede na tayong matindu ulit ng concerts, pag-shoot tayo ng events, maraming lighting na pa iba iba So, ang laking tulong ni T-Mode or ni Program Open Group. Okay? Next one is Shutter Mode or Shutter Priority Mode, S-Mode. So, si photographer ay nagkocontrol ng shutter speed at si camera naman ang nagkocontrol ng aperture. No? So, it's perfect for shooting situations where controlling your shutter speed is your priority. Kunyari, nagsushoot ka ng fast-paced subjects, sumasayaw, sports, ganyan, or gusto mong mag-aral ng landscapes naman in retrospect. No? So, gusto mong subukan na 30 seconds yung shutter speed mo, si camera na bahala sa iba. No? So, pwede yon. So, this is a good learning tool then to walk you through doing your photography. A-mode naman, it's the opposite of shutter priority mode. No? So, si camera, as si photographer ay nagkocontrol ng aperture, si camera ay nagkocontrol ng tamang shutter speed para doon sa aperture na pinili mo. So, it's perfect for shooting situations where you want to control your depth of field or you want to manipulate it. So, pwede rin siya applicable din for uh, shooting portraits or landscapes. So, ano rin siya? Um, kumbaga, it's a mode that would help to guide would help you guide your shooting style and, you know, yun nga, parang tulungan ka hand-in-hand hand kung ano yung appropriate aperture and appropriate shutter speed for that particular situation. Okay? So, si M mode naman or si manual mode, ito favorite ko na mode simply because ako as a photographer, I'll, I'm able to control all aspects of photography no? so or all aspects of aperture, si ISO, si shutter speed, tsaka si aperture. All aspects of exposure pala. <laughs> so it's perfect for you when you want to control fully yung images mo. It opens up creative possibilities on Gen si fireworks shooting, si uh, astrophotography, si silhouettes, si long exposure, si yung tinatawag natin slow shutter. Yan. So, napakadami mong pwedeng gawin at paglaruan pag naka-manual mode ka. So, it's very, very uh, educational, kumbaga. No? So, uh, use it at your own pace. No? So, hindi mo kailangan na deep dive ka kagad sa manual mode, pero mo isa-isahin. Okay? So ngayon, we we go on to some tips on how you improve your photography. No? So alam na natin yung technical aspect. Pasukin naman natin yung creative aspect. No? So one of the most essential uh, things that you need to learn when you do photography, bukod sa pag-aaral ng technical aspect, is you learn about composition. So composition, yan yung parang uh, bumubuo ng complete package ng litrato mo. So maganda nga siya sa technical aspect. Pag yung composition mo naman sa blind, wala rin. No? So, kailangan hand in hand, uh, balance yan. No? So, one of the basic compositional techniques is yung off-center na tinatawag o yung tinatawag nilang rule of thirds. So, it's most commonly known as rule of thirds. So, paano ba yan? So, yung subject mo, ilagay mo siya sa isang imaginary na grid sa, sa frame mo kung saan nag intersect yung grid. No? So, hindi sa gitna, hindi sa ibabaw, ganyan, simply because hindi ka nagsushoot ng one by one na photo. Hindi ka nagsushoot ng ID picture. No? So, nagiging mas mukhang dynamic yung litrato mo pag ganyan ang yung composition. No? So, napakaraming applications ng uh, tinatawag nating rule of thirds or yung off-center na composition, pwede natin siyang gamitin sa napaka uh, napakaraming genre sa photography. No? Pwede mo siyang gamitin sa portraiture. Yan. So medyo off-center yung ate sa frame. Pwede sa street photography. Yan. Street photography. Okay. Yan. So importante talaga na balance yung litrato mo. Hindi siya gitlang gitla. Kasi ang boring nun tsura nun. <laughs> okay. Yan. So kahit to travel photography, pwede rin nakikita natin yung bankero doon sa edge ng frame. Yeah. And a wider shot. Yeah, okay. So, tatandaan din natin na pag shoot tayo ng portraits, kailangan naka-focus tayo doon sa mata ng subject natin na pinakamalapit sa lente na kung saan ka nag-shoot. So, 
isa rin technique na pwede mong gamitin, gumamit ka ng aperture na wide, so maliit na F number, to be able to guide your viewer's eyes to your subject. Tapos yung background nung subject mo, blurred out na, tanggalin mo na yung mga distractions sa likod ng subject mo. Okay? So yan. So similar to that, I focus on the eye that the girl is pointing at. Tapos yung background ng image ko, we blurred it out already. I use a 1.2 lens here for me to be able to blur out the background. Ito naman, yan, 1.4 naman ang lens. Tapos I focus on her right eye. Yung her right, hindi yung my right. Kasi yun yung mata na mas malapit sa lente ko. Okay. Yan. So may questions po ba tayo? Okay. So ngayon, we, let's go and run through all about lenses. No? So lenses are the way we accessorize how we see the world. No? So napakarami ng lenses kanina. Sabi ko nga kanina, di ba? Ang dami-daming lenses na minamanufacture ni Nikon. So far, I believe that there are over 360 na Nikon lenses currently in production. So napakarami. Hindi natin kailangan bilhin yung lahat. Kasi unang-una, mahal. Pangalawa, yung iba, rare mahirap makahanap. Pangatlo, hindi naman natin siya magagamit lahat. Okay? So we just purchase what we need and what we, we need to use. Okay? So primarily kasi, ito mga uh, audiences natin ng introduction to photography, they are uh, mostly DX Nikon shooters. Ano ba yung DX Nikon? DX Nikon are yung mga tinatawag natin crop sensor na Nikon. So, they're smaller than full-frame cameras. They're lighter. They're more compact. They're more easier to handle. And greatly appeals to yung mga beginners ng uh, photography. No? So with that, dahil nga meron ba yung mga DX Nico na cameras, meron tayong tinatawag ng DX Nico. Yung DX Nico naman, these are lenses specifically manufactured to optimize, to be optimized do sa DX format or do sa crop sensor format na sensor ng mga Nikon cameras. No? So, mas, ano siya, magaan din, mas mura, tsaka mas maganda yung quality niya dahil nga ilalagay mo siya sa sensor na nababagay para sa kanya. Okay? So, some recommendations for DX micro lenses include itong 35 na 1.8G, pwedeng-pwede siya for travel, for shooting portraits, for everyday shooting. So, Maliit lang siya. Ang tawag nila rin dito prime lens kasi wala siyang zooming mechanism. So, you zoom with your feet. Pero mapapansin nyo, ang aperture niya is 1.8. So, napakalaki. You're able to uh, shoot in low light as well as you're able to blur out yung, yung background ng subject mo very, very efficiently. Okay. Next one. Pakita lang tayo ng litrato. No? So, this was shot at a very low light uh, cafe, kaya may spotlight lang doon sa nagigitara. Pero, I use an aperture of 2.2 here, so binaba ko pa ng konti. ISO 800 and 1 over 40th of a second. Okay? Another recommendation is yung 10 to 20 millimeter na f4.5 to 5.6 GVR. So, this lens is perfect for shooting travel photography or landscapes. Yung mga wide angle or group photo shooting. No? So, dahil nga 10 to 20 mm siya, sobrang-sobrang wide angle yung makukuha na mong perspective para dito. And ang maganda sa kanya is it has VR or yung tinatawag natin vibration reduction. So, it helps you stabilize your shots if you're using as very or as lower shutter speed. No? So, uh, laking tulog din talaga niyan. So, yan. This was a photo that I took using that lens, so 100 seconds, ah, 100 ISO, F8, and 3 seconds, no? So, um, siguro a tip that I can leave you guys is when you're shooting portraits, syempre kailangan, ay, shooting fireworks, syempre kailangan mo ng tripod, tapos yan yung pinaka-ideal settings na sisimulan mong gamitin. 100 ISO, F8, 3 seconds. Yung shutter speed mo, dyan na lang mag-iba yung kung gano'n mo kung ganong effect yung gusto mo. Between 1 second to 5 seconds or 8 seconds pa minsan, yung pwede mong gamitin na shutter speed when you shoot fireworks. Yan, ang diskarte sa fireworks. Okay, next one. 
70 to 300, 4.5 to 6.3 VR. So, pwedeng-pwede siya for landscapes, event shooting, long range, and sports. So, very lightweight lang tong lens na to. And it also is equipped with VR. Actually, malaking tulong ang VR when you're shooting telephoto lenses or itong mga long range lenses na to. Kasi it helps you stabilize your shot kahit na naka-handheld ka. Especially when you're shooting in slower shutter speeds. Yan. Okay. So an example of that, yan, pang concert, si David Guetta. Uh, I think this was three years ago. Medyo mataas na na shutter speed, pero, ana ah, ISO, pero, kita mo naman, okay pa yung image, no? Very, very, very usable pa. 5.6 aperture, 1 over 500 of a second. Okay. Okay. Kung mahili ka naman mag-shoot ng mga close-ups, no? so ang micro Nikkor na 42.8G, uh, it's one of the best lenses, best suited for your um, DX camera. So napakaganda po yung lens na yan for close-ups or macro work. So yan, trinang out ko siya, sinood ko yung relo ko, and yan po yung naging output niya. So actually hindi naman ako macro shooter, so sinubukan ko lang siya talaga. <laughs> Ayan. So, kung mahili ka naman mag-shoot ng creative photography or landscapes, eh, ang laking tulong rin ng fish eye. No? So, pwede, actually, ginagamit din nila to for underwater photography, pero medyo specialized equipment na yung gamit mo nung kailangan mo na ng mga parang housing sa camera mo for you to be able to use it underwater. No? So, pero, uh, as it is, to fish eye na to, napakaganda niya for, yun nga, shooting uh, very, very wide perspectives na talagang dinidistort mo uh, intentionally. So, yan ulit Makati Skyline uh, using the Fish Islands. 30 seconds F11 ISO 100. Siyempre, nakatry pa na tayo dyan. So, for everyday photography, portraits and travel, isa rin sa uh, pinamimilian ng tao, siyempre, yung 50mm na 1.8G. No? So, magtataka kayo, uh, ano bang maganda, 35 or 50? Depende po yan sa iyong taste. So, pwedeng uh, mas wider po yung perspective ng 35 ng konti, okay din po yun. Pero kung gusto nyo talaga very close up or very tight po yung shot po natin, we go with the 50mm lens. So, yan po ang isa sa mga pinaka versatile lenses when we do, uh, when we shoot 50mm kasi it's basically the same perspective as the human vision, human eye. So, uh, very, very, ano po yan, very, very versatile po yan. So, Niya, everyday photography, everyday shooting, uh, gamit na gamit po talaga ang 50mm lens. Hindi ko pa nalagay 1.8 po yung gamit ko dyan. Yun. So ngayon, at this point, meron po ba tayo mga katanungan? Ayan. Tanong-tanong po tayo kung meron na yung tanong. Isa stop share ko ng aking screen. Ayan. Sa natin aking camera. Yan, hello. Madilim ba? Ayan. So meron ba kayong questions guys para maiano natin, mai-address natin yung mga questions nyo at masagot natin kung baka kasi hindi kayo makatulog ganyan, meron kayong gusto pa lang itanong. Ah, uh, tanong niyo na para maganda. Ayan. Kahit type in niyo lang kung nahihiya kayo ah. Kung meron kayong gusto yung uh, i-clarify o meron kayong pressing uh, photography question. Uh, feel free to ask it sa ating uh, chat box para I can uh, answer it po. Yan. Tingin po. Yun to sa lenses pala, ng mga na-recommend ko na lens, before I forget, uh, these lenses are ang range niya between uh, 10 to 25,000 ang range ng lenses na yun. Ang medyo mahal lang dun po is yung fish eye. Yun yung maabot ng mga 40,000 kasi medyo specialized nga siya na lens. Pero yung mga 50mm na sa 15,000 po yan. Si 35 din, ganun. Tapos si uh, 10 to 20 na sa mga 20,000 po siya. So yun. Si Sir Kent Jimenez. Sir, ano po ba ang magandang lens na pang group shot pero masikip yung location? Ayan. Actually, napakaganda pong lens dyan yung na-recommend ko kanina, yung 10 to 20mm. Uh, simply because wide angle siya. No? So, pero ang gusto ko lang i-point out dyan is that uh, dahil nga wide angle lens siya, meron siyang 
konting distortion sa edges. So, im- importante as much as possible, huwag tayo maglalagay ng subjects sa mismo edge ng ating frame. Simply because, pag nalagay tayo ng subject sa frame natin, sa pinakadulo ng frame natin, pwede silang mag-bloat. Yung mukhang bloated, yung namamagay yung tao kasi nato sila sa pinaka-edge. So, as much as possible, lagay natin mo sila sa gitna. So, yun po ang isa sa recommendation ko. 10 to 20 millimeter. Yung 18 to 55 natin na kit lens, Okay siya. Pero may mga times na experience ko na rin to personally. No? Yung kunyari nag-group shot ka, marami kang tao, asa sa likod ng pader na, atras ka pa na atras, wala ka na maatrasan. So, isa sa pinaka-best na companion ng lens mo na 10, uh, 18 to 55 is the 10 to 20. Yan. Okay, si Aliyah Karen. Yan, si Mang Aliyah. Hello po. Uh, what sort of things do you use for astrophotography po? Paano rin po magiging sharp yung moon? Hehe. <laughs> Thank you po. Ayan. Actually, di ba nauuso ngayon yung mga tinip, yung mga uh, anong tawag dito? Astro events na yung super moon, yung mga blood moon, yung mga ano pa ba? Super blood moon, di ba? Ang daming ganyan. So, in terms of shooting the moon, so, isa sa sikreto, ito, sikreto to, ah, huwag yung pagsasabi to sa iba, alam nyo ba na ang mundo gumagalaw? Ayan. Na ang mundo natin gumagalaw. Hindi lang natin nararamdaman yan. Pero yun yung tinatawag natin rotation of Earth. Rotation na hindi revolution. Ha? Iba ang revolution. Yung isang taon po yun ang revolution. Parang may na alam tayo na balitang artista na nagkamali sa ganun. Anyway, dahil na gumagalaw ang, rotation, ang, ang Earth on its axis, yun yung tinatawag natin rotation. When we shoot distant objects, dahil nga gumagalaw tayo, Nakiki, yung yung distant object na yung kunyari yung buwan hindi siya natin mamaintain na sharp siya no so what do we do for unang-una siya dapat kailangan natin gumamit ng mahabang mahabang lens no so yung mga zoom lens natin 70 uh, 55 to 200 55 to 300 pwede yan syempre pero if we have a lens that's much much longer mas maganda syempre mas maganda yung magiging uh, perspective natin diyan no so pangalawa kailangan mo ng tripod no so, hindi mo pwedeng i-handle yung mga uh, moon shots natin no so una mahabang lens pangalawa stable na tripod pangatlo kailangan natin gumamit ng shutter speed na mabilis bakit mabilis for us to be able to compensate yung rotation ng earth no so dahil yung umiikot yung earth nakikita mo pag naka-zoom in ka na makikita mo kunyari pag frame mo ng muna ganyan kung mabagal yung shutter speed mo makikita mo yung moon umangat na ng konti. No? So, for you to be able to catch it, i-compose mo yung shot mo na i-anticipate mo kung saan papasok yung moon sa iyong frame. Tapos gumamit ka na mabilis sa shutter speed. Siguro, uh, I would recommend 1 over 100 yung pinakamabagal mo. 1 over 100, gumamit ka 1 over 250, 1 over 500 na shutter speed para ma-insure mo na sharp yung moon. No? So, yun yung... Uh, settings mo na gamitin para maging sharp yung move mo. For astrophotography naman, syempre, for you to be able to capture yung katulad kanina ng Milky Way na shots. Pero kasi tayo yung tinatawag ng mga dark sky locations. Dark sky locations are these locations wherein you go to na they are away from city lights and light pollution brought about by city lights. So as in talagang madilim siya talaga. You can see the night sky and the heavenly bodies and yung cosmos and yung uh, Milky Way uh, with your naked eye. So for you to be able to uh, capture that, kailangan very dark sky uh, dark sky location ka. So katulad nga nung kanina, sa Zambales yun, so medyo malayo na sa kabihasnan para lang talaga masigurado ko na madilim yung sky. Uh, kailangan mo syempre ng tripod na maganda. Also, kailangan mo ng aperture ng lens na the widest that you can take. Kung kit lens ang gamit mo, f3.5, that's okay just use your ISO to compensate. No? So, kailangan taasan mo yung ISO mo mga 2,000 siguro. Pero yun nga, depende na nga lang rin yun sa iyong camera. Tapos, for uh, shutter speed, uh, I would recommend na not longer than 30 seconds. Kasi yung 30 seconds, pag pumatak na ng 30 seconds yun, nagsisimula na mag-trails yung, yung stars. Kasi nga, yun nga, sabi ko nga, nag- nag-rotate yung Earth nakikita natin yung movement ng stars. So, kung gusto mo na sharp yung stars mo, shorter than 30 seconds, siguro mga 10 seconds, 15 seconds, yan. Pero kung gusto mo na 
may paggalaw na konting stars mo. 30 seconds and above. So, yun po ang settings natin for astrophotography. So, si Sir DJ naman, as a landscape photographer, for what practices do you usually do po? Or always take in mind po when doing landscape shoots? Um, siguro best practices dyan, syempre, get a sturdy tripod. As importante yan, isang talagang malaking investment yan when you do landscape photography. Tapos, as much as possible, you bring extra yung mga plate ng tripod. Kasi nangyayari dyan, minsan, nakakalimutan mo sa bahay o may nakihiram o naiiwan mo o nawawala o nalalagay mo sa bulsa ng bambu na hindi mo na alam kung saan mo nilagay. So as much as possible, you bring extra yung mga tripod plates. So yun. Um, what practices do I always do? Siyempre, I do research. Importante ang research. Research in terms of location, kung safe ba, kung ano ba yung magiging perspective ko doon, saan ba sisikat yung araw at lulubog yung araw. Uh, ano ba yung makukuha ng ko doon and all the research that you can do so if you can hire a guy that's good if you can uh, go on Google Maps that's that's good also download apps read up on it so important talaga ang research pagdating sa pag-shoot ng landscape photography um, siguro din another uh, tip that I can give when you do landscape photography is Pili ka, ano ko ba, pang sunrise ko ba na landscape photographer o pang sunset? And with that, depende rin kasi yung sa location mo. Kasi may mga location na talagang maganda siya pang sunrise, pero pang sunset, pangit na. And the other way around. No? So, uh, that would depend on maagap, maagap ka ba bumangon, ganyan, or magtetrek ka pa ng madaling araw para lang makuha yung spot mo. And, yun niya. Uh, research is really important talaga. Yun ang mabibigay ko, sir. Uh, DJ sa iyo para sa landscape photography shoots. Um, si Miss Erica Jane Bautista, may compatible po ba ang Nikkor lenses sa ibang brand ng camera? Example, Canon Body Plus Nikkor lens. Actually, uh, ang Nikon lens, pwede mo siyang gamitin sa ibang camera bodies via adapter. Pero yung full, full functionality ng Nikon lens, hindi mo siya uh, magagamit to its fullest potential. Kunyari, wala ka autofocus hindi siya nagmi-meter ng maayos kasi, yun nga, walang outright communication with the Nikon lens and the adapter to the other camera brand. No? So, pwede siyang gumamit, pwede mo siyang magamit, pero yun nga lang, you lose uh, compatibility or full functionality. Yun, Miss Erica. Uh, si Sir Kent ulit, he has a question. Uh, ano po ba, uh, ano naman po yung lens na parang all-in-one? Meron po ba, Sir? Actually, meron tayong mga tinatawag ng all-in-one lenses. No? So, Uh, Nikon has a number of them. Meron siyang, meron tayong tinatawag ng 18 to 200. So mula wide na 18mm hanggang 200mm. Meron po yan. Meron din tayong 18 to 300. So uh, mula 18 naman to 300mm. Yun nga lang, ang mga concern natin sa all-in-one lenses. Kasi nga, simply uh, the, the reason why Nikon manufactures so many lenses na hindi all-in-one, kasi yung quality ng glass is much better na, kunyari may dala kang 18 to 55, tsaka 55 to 200, as compared sa 18 to 200. Mas maganda pa rin yung quality ng dalawang glass kesa doon sa all-in-one. Pero, syempre, uh, when you're looking to travel light or ayaw mo na papalit-palit ng lente, a good option also is yung mga all-in-one lenses, si 18 to 200 or 18 to 300. Actually, you can also look at other uh, third-party brands, pero yun, my consideration with that is yung compatibility ng lens and camera down the road. Kasi kunyari, nag-upgrade ka ng camera. Yung lente na meron nga ngayon na from five years ago, sigurado ko ba na compatible pa rin siya. ba diba? So, yun yung mga considerations na, na kailangan mong pag-isipan. So, uh, magaan. Siyempre, kasi isang, isang lente lang yung daladala mo. Pero yung quality, okay naman. Maganda naman yung quality niya. Pero siyempre, wala pa rin tatalo dun sa dedicated na telephoto lens or dedicated na wide angle lens. Yeah. So, yun po. So, yun po ang ating mga question. May questions pa po ba kayo? Baka meron pa. Ihabol natin bago tayo mag-closing remarks. Closing remarks. <laughs> Ayan. Meron pa po ba? Okay. So, parang, parang wala na. So, okay. Uh, ihahabol ko lang. Kung meron kayong tanong, baka meron kayong tanong na hindi nyo maitanong ngayon, meron kayong gusto nyo i-voice out 
uh, hindi kayo makatulog pag hindi nyo siya naitanong, isishare ko lang ito. Uh, pwede nyo kung i-follow sa Instagram. Yan po ang aking Instagram, The Urban Wanderer. So, uh, I also post other my other photos there. Uh, yeah, pwede rin yung, pwede rin siyang gamitin as inspiration. So, yun. Uh, you can also add me on Facebook, Vince Nanjing, para rin meron kayong matatanungan. So, sumasagot naman ako, nag-add naman ako, hindi naman ako suplado. <laughs> Ayan, so yun po. Uh, Vince Nanjing po on Facebook, The Urban Wanderer po, at on, on Instagram. So, yun po. Screenshot nyo lang, picture nyo po. Yan. So, okay. Uh, meron pa bang question? Okay, wala. Ang wala ng question. Ayan. Ayan, si Sir Ken. Ayan. Uh, paano ulit, Sir, maging dynamic yung picture? Ang isa sa pinaka-tips ko na pwede mong gawin para maging dynamic yung picture mo, lagyan mo siya ng movement. Lagyan mo siya ng movement. How? Uh, you use long exposure para magkunyari may mga moving cars ka, moving vehicles ka, may light trails yun na maiiwan. So, hindi siya mukhang, hindi mukhang static yung nitrato mo. Magbuka pa rin siyang merong gumagalaw kahit ng isang frame lang siya. So, ang laking tulong talaga ng gumagamit ka ng tripod, so gumagamit ka ng long exposure to promote uh, or to capture yung light rays and to promote movement para maging mukhang dynamic yung gitrat. Ayan. So, yan. May questions pa po ba tayo? Pahabol. <laughs> yan. Okay. Sige. Okay. Parang wala na tayong questions. Ayan. Guys, uh, isang request ko lang po pala. Uh, pwede po ba tayo mag-on ng camera? Mag-ano lang tayo? Mag-group photo lang tayo para sa ating uh, ano, para sa ating class picture. Para meron lang rin akong pang document ng ating class picture. Pa-open naman guys ng camera nyo. Smile lang kayo. Uh, Tapos bibilang ako. Tingin lang kayo sa camera nyo. Tapos uh, picture tayo. Yan. Para masaya naman. Ang dami natin ngayon. Labing dalawa tayo. Yan. Yan, si Sir Ken, nakikita ko na ako orange. Oh. Ayos. <laughs> si Ma'am Shai, hello po. Ayan. Sige, iba nahihiya. Medyo nahihiya. <laughs> si Sir DJ, hello sir. Ganda ng gabi po. Ayan, si Sir Christian, mag-on na rin po. Ayan. Hi Sir Christian, maganda ng gabi po. Sir Steve, good evening po. Ayan. Okay, okay. Sige, parang marami-rami na rin tayo. Okay. Sige po, ah. Um, wait lang, ah. Kunahin natin yung ating camera pang screenshot. Okay. Sige po. Tingin po tayo sa camera. Bibilang po ako para nakangiti po tayo lahat. Ayan. Sige po. Okay, one, two, three. Yan. Isa pa po ha, para sigurado tayo. Siyempre, photographer tayo, hindi lang tayo nag-iisang picture. <laughs> okay, one more. One, two, three. Okay, so maraming salamat po sa pag-participate sa ating uh, Nikon School Online Session for tonight. Uh, I hope na marami kayong natutunan and marami kayong tips na magagamit for your own photography. Actually, ano lang nato eh, crash course lang po ito. So, uh, we also do other sessions then. Actually, next, uh, siguro two weeks from now, we'll be also announcing yung ating isa pang session. Uh, it's all about events photography naman. So, saktong-sakto, medyo magpapasko na, may mga family get-together, ganyan. So, maganda rin siyang, yun nga, Maganda rin siya pagkuhanan ng tips. So, abang po kayo dyan sa, in, uh, sa aming uh, Nikon School na uh, session all about events photography. Magbibigay rin po kami ng sign-up link dyan. So, I hope na marami kung po kayo natutunan sa ating session for tonight uh, na ma-apply nyo rin po sa mga photography nyo po. So, uh, kung meron po kayong tanong, please feel free to message me directly. I'll be answering your questions and Uh, abang-abang rin po kayo sa Nikon Philippines na Facebook page for other updates po with regards to Nikon School and sa mga iba po po nating uh, session. So yun lang po. Uh, maraming salamat po ulit sa pagstay hanggang sa pinaka-pinakadulo ng ating session. Medyo uh, information overload feeling ko pero yun nga uh, I hope na marami pa rin kayo natutunan and kung meron pa kayong question na 
gusto nyo pang itanong kahit after yung itong session natin, my inbox is always open. So yun po, maraming salamat po sa inyo and I hope that you have a pleasant evening po. Keep safe po kayo lahat and I hope that I would be seeing you all soon again. Salamat po ulit. Thank you po. Thank you po, thank you po. Thank you, sir.